Hello, this is Mr. Wynn, and this video is graphing other trig functions. We're going to go over tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant. So let's graph a basic tangent graph, that is f of x equals tangent of x. Remember the x are the inputs or the angles, while the y's or the outputs are the tangent values. We'll use the unit circle to help us plot points. So first, remember tangent is y over x, so tangent is 0 degrees or 0 radians, will so be 0 by 1, 0. That's why at 0 for the angle, I put 0 for the value. So I go up to, say, power of 4, 45 degrees. Root 2 over 2, divide by root 2 over 2, same thing by itself is positive 1. If I keep going, I keep going up, but I get in trouble at pi over 2 or 90 degrees. If I do y over x, 1 divided 0, that's undefined. But look, look what happens when I get really close. Say I do 88 degrees, 89 degrees, and 89.999 degrees. Say I get 28, then 57, then 57,295. I then say I go past 90 degrees. This is a negative here. Let's try it. So let's do tangent. Let's do 90 point say zero 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 one that's going to give me a pretty big negative number negative i don't know that's one two that's negative 572 million right if i student tangent of a 90.5 just so i go half a degree over it's getting closer but it's negative 114 it's still a big negative number all right but then it keeps going up until i hit three pi over four or uh 135 degrees positive root two over two divided negative two over two positive and negative is negative, so it's negative 1. Then I get to pi, well, 0 by negative 1, so 0. That's why it's pi. And then I keep going and just keeps repeating. All right, so notice a lot of things. The graph appears to be repeating itself. All right, that makes sense. Again, we're going in circles. We're doing coterminal angles, so the same value, so it's periodic behavior. The domain of a tangent graph is all x, where x doesn't equal pi over 2 plus pi over n, because pi over 2 is where it has trouble. Pi over 2 is where... The x values are 0, because uh, when you divide 0, it's undefined. So it can't do pi over 2, and it can't do 3 pi over 2. That's why it's pi over 2 plus half a revolution plus a, a full pi. So pi over 2, then if I add uh, 2 pi over 2, so full pi will be 3 pi over 2. Then doing it will be 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and so on. Or I subtract pi. So pi over 2 minus pi is negative pi over 2. Subtract pi again, that's negative 3 pi over 2. Subtract pi again, it's negative 5 pi over 2. All right. The range of a tangent graph is negative infinity to positive open. Infinity is always open, but it goes down forever, it goes up forever. There are vertical asymptotes. Those are these dotted lines I can't cross. That's where it's divided zero, so it's just like the domain. It's where all x's are pi over 2 plus some interval or multiple of pi. The period of a tangent graph is also pi. So it does from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. It just does its pattern, then it repeats right away, it repeats right away. So within these two little vertical lines, it does a full pattern cycle. All right, and then tangent is an odd function since tangent of x is equal to negative tangent negative x, right? It's a reflection of the x-axis and the y-axis, or I just rotate it 180. All right, so like before, all transformations a, b, h, k apply to any function, including the trig function of tangent. You'll see this equation. f of x equals a times the tangent of b times x minus h on parentheses and plus k. All right, one special thing we like to find about tangent are those vertical asymptotes, the first two. You can find them by just solving this equation. B times x minus h equals pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. That came from this pi over 2 asymptote here and this negative pi over 2 asymptote here. And you can do any two asymptotes you want, really. All right, you can also find the period using our period formula. P equals the true period of our function over B. Now, sine and cosine was 2 pi was the true period over B, but for tangent, its true period is pi. So all that changes is the top part. And also there's no such thing as amplitude, right? I mean, there is a vertical stretch where compressed, but it goes up forever. So you can't talk about a height above or below the midline. But there still technically is kind of a middle in here. So the midline idea still applies. All right, next we have cotangent. It's very similar to the graph of tangent. It has a period of pi and a range of all row numbers, negative infinity, positive infinity but it will have a different domain and different VAs. So here's this graph, but uh, let's remember cotangent is a reciprocal function of tangent. That is cotangent equals one over tangent. And if tangent is sine over cosine, y over x, then cotangent is cosine over sine. Here, we don't want sine to be zero. So sine is zero on the unit circle when you're at zero and pi. So if you notice right here, zero has the vertical asymptote and pi has the vertical asymptote. And that's different from before where it was pi over twos had the asymptote, right? and negative pi over 2. So here, our domain is going to be all x's 
where x does not equal some multiple pi. It can't be 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. It can't be negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi. It can't even be 0 pi itself. And those are where the vertical asymptotes are. And like tangent, we want to find the VAs. You do them by solving b x minus h equals 0, because that's the first vertical asymptote. And then b x minus h equals pi, because the second asymptote. Or you can do like negative pi and pi, your choice. All right, next we have cosecant. And cosecant, like for is related to sine. The best way to graph this is just graph the sine version and then use the idea of reciprocals. So if I give you a weird transformed uh, cosecant graph, replace cosecant with sine, graph it like normal, like this, you know, with the mid high, mid low, mid pattern, and then use the idea of reciprocals. So reciprocals, let me just talk about this for a second. Again, a cosecant is a function of sine, so that is 1 over sine. So whatever the values put right here, just flip it. So for example, if I have sine of 0, right, at 0 degrees, sine of uh, 0, 0, I can't divide 0, that's why it's undefined here. But when I go to sine pi over 2 at the top of the unit circle, that's 1. Well, 1 divided by 1 is 1. But if I go to sine of 2 pi over 3, well, 2 pi over 3 is 1 half. 1 over 1 half, that's going to be 2. That's why right here is that value 2. That keep going, it gets bigger and bigger, it goes up. You just have the same maximum, but that's going to be your now your new minimum. And then you just go upwards like a U. So this was the mi uh, old minimum. Now it's going to be the new maximum for this red max here. And you just go this direction, make a U, the opposite way. So graph the original, and then just kind of flip the graph. Draw the vertical asymptotes at the midline always. And uh, here, period you'll see is 2 pi, because from here to here is the up pattern, then from here to down the pattern, then up here it will repeat up pattern, then down pattern, then up pattern, then down pattern. So it takes a full 2 pi, just like sine. Domain is all x is such that n is not a multiple of pi. So it can't be 0 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, and so on. Range, this is a little different, it goes down forever, all the way to negative 1, close, then it's a union, there's a skip, a gap right here, then it goes from positive 1, close, all the way to pause infinity, open. Vertical asymptotes match uh, those uh, restrictions where we're divided by zero. And then uh, cosecant is an odd function since cosecant of x is negative cosecant of negative x. If I flip this uh, sideways and then upside down, or reflect over y and x, and take, or it doesn't really matter, it gets the same picture, or just rotate the picture uh, 180 degrees. Alright, secant is the same thing. You graph cosine to replace secant with cosine, graph like normal using your transformations. Then you do the reciprocal idea. Just wherever it is, draw the vertical asymptotes wherever the midline is supposed to be, because we can't divide by zero, and then just draw those u's of the direction. So like before, it's just 1 over cosine. Uh, again, cosine of 1 is 1, 1 over 1 is still 1. Cosine here will be uh, 1 over 1 half, that's going to turn to 2, and so on. All right, period still 2 pi. Domain now is uh, can't be pi over 2 plus any multiple of pi from there. So it can't be pi over 2 plus pi or pi over 2 minus pi. Because pi over 2, the top and bottom of the unit circles where cosine is 0 and you can't divide by 0. Range is just like the cosecant function. Negative infinity to negative 1, close. Pause the 1 to pause infinity, open. Vertical asymptotes match that. And then it is even since secant of x is equal to secant of negative x. So secant of pi is right here. Secant of negative pi is the same y value. Right? It's just a reflection over the y-axis, sideways. All right, here's all six. Uh, so you notice you just uh, this max becomes a min right here. This max becomes a min right here. You just flip, go it upside down you. And tangent looks like cotangent, just upside down, right? And also shifted sideways because they have different vertical asymptotes. Right, last thing, um, a product of two functions can be graphed using properties of individual functions. Below the graph, f of x equals x times sine of x. All right. Now, if you use properties of absolute value and the fact that sine of x is always less than equal to 1, because that's the domain, right? I'm sorry, the range from negative 1 to positive 1 for sine. Then you can say 0 is less than or equal to absolute value x less, uh, times absolute value sine of x less than or equal to absolute value x. Basically, if this number right here is between 0 and 1, it's always positive, it's always going to be smaller than this full value, right? So say after value of x is 5, then this will be like 0.5 of 5. All right? Now if we follow from there, we can then say, oh, 
Then you just use negative absolute value x, positive absolute value x, integral absolute value middle, because between those two. And uh, in our graph, you can see that x is stuck or squeezed between y equals x, this line, and y equals negative, this line. So we call the factor x, the multiplier in front right here, the damping factor. And this works for any type of a graph. It could be exponential, but you'll see that the sine graph will just keep bouncing back and forth between these two like walls or barriers. All right, that's it for this video. Make sure you're asking questions. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.